Seattle Mariners drop three out of four games in Minnesota against the Twins in this latest series. They strike out 53 times over a four-game stretch. They drop to one and a half games behind the Texas Rangers for first place in the AL West. But some good news is that Brian Wu is set to make his season debut tomorrow night in Seattle against the Oakland Athletics. He has started the season on the injury list with right elbow inflammation, but again, he's making his debut tomorrow night. And so far in three starts in Tacoma in his rehab assignment, 11 and a third innings pitched, just five hits allowed, 17 strikeouts over those 11 and a third innings, a 0.441 whip, a 13.5 strikeouts per nine, and he has not walked a single batter in those first three starts. He's looking to come out tomorrow night and shut down the Oakland Athletics, potentially be a little bit of a spark to this Mariners team. You can't call it a rough patch that they just went through. They won six consecutive series in a row. That that streak had to come to an end at some point, but the Mariners pitching this, this series have been beat up quite a bit. George Kirby, Logan Gilbert didn't have their best outings. As I mentioned, the Mariners struck out 53 times over this four-game series, and per Ryan Divish, before last night's game, the Mariners had struck out in 27.1% of their plate appearances with a runner on base, the highest in all of baseball. Eight of the 13 strikeouts last night had a runner on base. And as Ryan Divish states, it's a tough way to live even in modern MLB with that issue. And after today's game against Pablo Lopez and the Twins, they struck out 15 times in today's game. They have now struck out 10 or more times in a game 26 times so far this season. They are now 13 and 13 in games in which they struck out 10 or more times. The Mariners as a ball club have the most strikeouts in Major League Baseball so far this year, and it is not even close. They have 399 strikeouts on the year so far. Second place is the Boston Red Sox with 369 strikeouts. That's an 8% difference between the Mariners and second place in strikeouts. And get this, the Mariners are the worst team in baseball at striking out this year with 399. The Houston Astros are the best at avoiding strikeouts. They have 236 on the year. That's a 69% difference. The Mariners are striking out 69% more than the Houston Astros. That's a massive difference. The Seattle Mariners so far this year are 24th in baseball in OPS over the last 15 days. Specifically, they are 21st. And right now, the Mariners have three guys that are in the top 12 in total strikeouts on the year. Jorge Polanco is leading the team with 50 strikeouts so far this year. That is third in all of baseball. Julio Rodriguez and Cal Raleigh are tied for 12th with 46 strikeouts so far this year. Mitch Hanniger is currently 21st in strikeouts with 42. And there's some other guys on the team where it's not the usual suspects that are striking out. For example, Ty France is striking out at a 24.8% rate. Last year, he was striking out at just 17.6%. Last year, he was in the 77th percentile in strikeout rate versus this year right now, he's in the 32nd percentile. And Ty is a guy who's been known as a pure hitter. We saw him go to driveline baseball this offseason. He had a hot start. We were looking at his baseball savant page and it was littered with red. That has cooled off quite a bit. With the Mariners' lack of offensive production so far this year, there's been some trade rumors that have been floating around, especially with the Mariners' surplus in starting pitching. Now that Brian Wu is up, Emerson Hancock is going to be sent down to AAA. He's been hit or miss, but pretty solid so far this year on the bump. In a proposed trade from Jim Bowden of The Athletic, the New York Mets would be sending Pete Alonso to the Seattle Mariners, and in return, Emerson Hancock and Ty France would be heading to the Mets. Pete Alonso is one of the biggest thumpers in all of baseball. The past two seasons, he's had over 40 home runs, over 118 RBIs the past two seasons. He's been 23% to 46% better than the average hitter as far as OPS is concerned. Pete Alonso is set to become a free agent after this season, so it's not typically the type of deal that Jerry DePoto and the Mariners front office would make in which they try to have years of control on whoever they're bringing in. But the Mariners have got to make some big offensive changes at some point this year if they want to really put some ammo behind the best starting rotation in all of baseball and compete deep into the postseason this year. I don't know that it's completely realistic to trade for Pete Alonso at this point in the year, maybe later on in the year, but I think we might see an extended look of Luke Rayleigh at first base. We might see Tyler Locklear or some other guys like Jonathan Class A come back up or some other guys throughout the minor league system that could come up, have an opportunity, and potentially contribute. The Mariners' starting rotation has cooled off ever so slightly after being basically historic over the past few weeks. There's going to be highs and lows throughout the season naturally with all parts of the lineup, but their offense has consistently struggled in certain areas to where you cannot consistently 
produce on the offensive side if you're striking out 10 plus times per game throughout the majority of the season. The Mariners are heading back to Seattle to start a three-game series against the A's tomorrow night. They then have three games at home against the Royals, a day off, and then they head out for a tough road stretch against the Orioles, the Yankees, and then the Nationals. I hope to see you tomorrow night in Seattle. I'll be there with Will Ortner and the Couch GM crew. Again, Will is going to be doing the 999 challenge, nine beers, nine hot dogs, and nine innings. We'll see how far he makes it, but come say hey, hang out, and I hope to see you there.